Hello YouTube. Welcome back to Nutkin Farm. Well it's a warm one as we're progressing through February 2023 and we're keeping that grass down which is all important as the harvest season approaches and you try to create a well-groomed surface to pick up your nuts from. But I brought you here today back to block one to introduce you uh, to a, a special tree. Now I'm not sure what variety this tree is, possibly an H2, I don't know, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna call him stupid. Now, you might think, oh, hang on, that's a bit harsh. Daniel, what are you calling a tree stupid for? It's just a tree, it's doing its best. Well, three reasons. One, the tree doesn't have ears, so I can call it whatever I like. Two, if it did have ears, it probably wouldn't understand English because it's an Australian native tree. And three, the tree is being stupid. And you might think, why? It looks healthy, green, it's bushing up in all the right places, it's not too tall. This is a good tree. But underneath its branches, you can see what I'm talking about. Now, there are beautiful, pretty flowers all over it. And that's the stupid thing. It's February. Now, it's literally the opposite time of the year in the Southern Hemisphere when this should be happening. It's got flowers like it is coming up to early spring and yet it's the middle of summer. And a few trees do get it in, um, in an orchard. This one is an extreme example, which is why I brought you here. But, you know, literally, it's got racemes everywhere. It's not just a half-hearted flowering. It's the full bit. And there's no nuts on this tree, or if there are, there's only a few. And some of them might, might not even be from this season. Although, no, look, there's one. There's a nut on the same, on the same tree as it's uh, all that flowering. And, you know... Other trees don't have that. They've got nuts on them, which is what you want at this time of year because harvest time is approaching. And you don't have to walk very far in this block, you know, despite it being a fairly poor season for nut set, you don't have to walk far to, to find trees that are doing what they're supposed to. This tree here I'll call genius. I don't know what variety it is either. <laughs> but um, it raises the question, you know, what is this out of season flowering? Why does it happen? And what can you do with it? And I suppose the biggest question is, why does it happen? Um, sometimes trees, and, and it's not all the trees in, a, in an orchard, but sometimes a tree can get confused about what season it is. And for some reason gets prompted to put out a whole new bunch of flowers. Now, this particular tree um, is fed the same way, receives the same kind of water, uh, and all the other conditions of the other trees in the block, and yet it's behaving this way. Now, sometimes it can come down to the variety of tree, because it is known in the industry that some varieties can put out out-of-season flower more often than others. Um, A4 is known for that. Apparently some of the A varieties can get confused and flower at the completely wrong time of year. Last winter I got early flowering from some 344 trees who thought it was spring after we had such a dark and rainy autumn. When the sun came back in winter they thought spring had sprung and you think well look you know it's actually not a bad guess by those trees. You wouldn't call them entirely stupid. There are some that, that are very resistant to out-of-season flowering and just, you know, doesn't, doesn't happen much at all. And there are others like this tree that'll have one or two flowers in odd places, but otherwise they're sticking with the program and they've got nuts. Is nutrition a factor? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, back in the last episode of the Macadamia Show, Bruce Chester and I were discussing what you put into trees to make them flower and fruit and we agreed that the primary element in flowering is potassium. Now I've just had soil testing done and block one was one of the areas that was soil tested. It's reasonably low in potassium so it's certainly not 
some excess of flowering nutrients that is causing stupid over here to put um, put on out out of season flowers so that's not it um, there are some tests and research done overseas and interesting when you, they're looking at a macadamia industry in Thailand there are a couple of academic studies saying look the trees do get a bit confused by the equatorial climate because there's not that much difference between the seasons where they're trying these trees and you can sometimes get two lots of flowering a year and uh, in Thailand they're exploring the idea of whether or not you might get two crops per year out of the trees. Most of the time that doesn't happen. Um, out of season flowering does not mean out of season crop. It does depend a little bit on um, when the out of season flowering is happening. If it's happening close to normal flowering season, like my 344s last winter, that can turn into early nuts and that can add to your crop. And in fact, this year it, it can, the early season flowering might be the only crop I actually get out of the 344s because the flowering that happened when it was supposed to got washed out by rain. But in other respects, and particularly this time of year in summer, when you do get out of season flowering, it will never turn into nuts because at the time the nuts are meant to be putting on oil accumulation and growing in size, the sun goes away on us and it's the sun and the heat that's needed to generate that oil and you don't get it. So you, if you get nuts at all, the nuts just become unviable, drop off and you'll never see them again. And so in that case, in that sense, it's a bit of a waste of energy in the tree because a lot of energy does go into flowering. Not as much as it goes into fruiting, but obviously if you want trees to be efficient, you want them to be spending their energy on something like that rather than something that won't produce a crop. Is there any way you can prevent out of season flowering? Well, they haven't discovered one yet and you could, in theory, go up to the trees that have engaged in out-of-season flowering and pull the flowers off. Um, the flowers, unfortunately, tend to keep alive the life cycle of lace bug, which is a temporary pest, but if there's out-of-season flowering, it can flare up and keep pest numbers up for your next real flowering season, which is the last thing you want. But there's no way on a tree like Stupid that we could go pick all those flowers off as they go right up to the top of the tree here. There it might be a situation where a tree that didn't put on nuts in the real flowering is trying to have another go at it. And you have to wonder whether this particular one, with so few nuts on it, is either spending an excess of energy that it would otherwise put into the nuts, or you know just having a second try at what it was meant to do earlier and I do notice that the out-of-season flowering is heaviest in trees that have a very poor crop, crop load on so there may be some truth to that um, in terms of preventing the out-of-season flowering all I suppose you can do is hopefully protect the flower that you've got at the time it's meant to happen uh, and that gives you the best crop anyway, because those are the flowers that actually turn into money for you. So that's the consideration with out-of-season flowering. You can't really get varieties that are super immune to it. Um, I'm told the 246 is as vulnerable as anything else. Um, some of the A varieties are particularly vulnerable. Um, a lot of the old Hawaiians are quite resistant to out-of-season flowering because Hawaii also, where all these breeds were developed, Hawaii was also a country where macadamias could get confused by the lack of change in seasons and flower and, and set fruit multiple times a year. And that, for them, is just as inefficient as it would be for us because you end up getting very extended harvest seasons and also very extended spraying seasons for the nuts. And spraying is a major expense. I mean, imagine having to protect nuts for sort of eight months of the year 
instead of about four. Uh, and in the current pricing environment, you certainly want all your crops to come in at once. Now here's an example. There's some stupid flowering, but it's combined with some pretty nice nutset as well. So this tree seems to want to do it all. Again, I've got no idea which particular variety this is. The flowers are healthy, they don't seem to be attacked by lace bug, but they certainly might harbour some before they go. And yet, in a month or two's time, those nuts are going to be on the ground and they look really good. So there's our little mystery, guys. Um, no one I know is doing too much research into it. But if you're in an equatorial country and watching this, do have a look at how macadamias perform in your area and whether or not they are resistant to out-of-season flowering. Because the closer you live to the equator, and they're planting macadamias up in northern Australia too, which would also, also come under this heading. Where the seasons vary the least, the tendency to out-of-season flower becomes potentially the most damaging in terms of efficiently farming a crop for what you want. Thanks for watching again today, guys. I will catch up with you again soon. But meanwhile, there is grass to fight. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of preparation for some harvest blocks. At this stage, I don't actually think I'm going to be harvesting my old tall blocks that are usually the stalwarts for me because the crop is so poor in those blocks. But uh, block one will be a candidate for harvest, as will blocks six and seven. And ironically, those are also the blocks where the grass is growing the most. So, no rest for the wicked. Catch you soon, guys.